Martha and I'm here with my third installment of my video series, Theater Careers. This time I'm speaking with Cheryl Yancey who is a professor at Shenandoah Conservatory in Winchester, Virginia. It was really interesting getting a college professor's insight on this. Three years ago I actually met Cheryl because um, we were having a career day at school and all of us in the specials team wanted to get someone from our field to talk to the kids and I had just moved here. I didn't really know anyone so I ended up reaching out to a bunch of professors at Shenandoah into a conservatory and Cheryl responded and she was so so amazing and she's a costume design professor so she came to our school and she showed the kids some costumes that she had designed from she showed them a bell dress from Beauty and the Beast and she showed them a pirate costume and the kids still talk about it to this day they remember when the costume designer came to their school so I have nothing but the utmost pride and respect for Cheryl as a professor, as a human, and I am so excited for you to see her very insightful interview. And thank you so much for interviewing with me. Happy to be here. I always like talking to you. <laughs> um, my first question, which isn't a question, it's just if you could please explain what your job is. My job is to teach costuming related courses such as costume design, um, fashion history, it's now period styles has architecture and decor included, um, stage costuming, which is a basic um, stage costuming class where you learn the basics of how to sew and the basics of theater costuming and things like that. I've taught stage makeup, advanced stage makeup, theater crafts, you know, costume crafts, that kind of stuff. And I design costumes for, for various productions here very very cool i want to take your makeup class <laughs> that's one thing i never learned that i wish i did um and if you could just walk us through how did you get to where you are now well um my mother taught me how to sew when i was a little girl and um i wasn't involved in theater until i went to college and i didn't start college until i was 22 years old because my family just didn't have the money to send me to college. So I finally said, okay, I'm going on my own and I'll find a way to pay for it, which I did. And I needed a class um, in the humanities area. And uh, one of the classes I could take was a theater acting class. And I went, okay, I'll take that just for the fun of it. I had been singing again, since I was a little girl in church and things like that. So I got involved in, in acting there and I was cast in plays and musicals and but when you're working in a small theater program like that and they find out you can sew, <laughs> guess what you're doing? You're working on costumes. So the next thing I knew is I found myself still being in shows, but also designing and building costumes at the same time without any formal training. And um, when I went from there, that was a small community college. I went on to a um, four year institution to get my bachelor's. I worked in the costume shop um, there as my work study position. And I was, I got my degree in speech communication and theater education. I was going to teach high school speech and drama. And I decided that I didn't really want to do that. So after I graduated, I was home the first semester and hadn't found a job that I really wanted to do yet. And I got a phone call from Indiana States where I went and got my, um, my bachelor's asking me if I'd be interested in coming back as their shop manager, because the one they had left mid year because she was having a baby minor detail. And so I said, sure. So I went back and I met a person there who was the scene designer for that year and said, you need to be a designer. You need to go to grad school and you need to be a designer. Because no one was encouraging me to do that because no one, you know, in my, my home didn't know that that was a possibility. And the costume designer where I was didn't want to lose me as her shop manager. And so she wasn't encouraging me. And this person was like, no, 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 you need to do that. So I applied to grad school and, and said, okay. And I went to George Washington University in DC and got my graduate degree and the rest is sort of history as they say. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons I like interviewing people with different careers. Cause like, you know, all these people like accidentally, like I was like that too. It's like accidentally finding out. It's like, why wasn't it purposeful? Why didn't someone purposefully tell me about this? <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I still credit this person. We're still great friends. With the fact that that it was I owe my career to to him. Wow. And um, once you became a designer, what? How did you know you wanted to specifically teach? Well, I do have a my undergraduate degree is in education, so I've always had an interest in teaching. 
And so that was the main reason I kind of went for my MFA because I knew if I wanted to teach on a college level, I had to do that. But I also needed more training in how to be a costume designer. And I, after I first graduated from um, GW, I worked as a cutter draper for the Shakespeare Theater at the Folger, but I knew that I always wanted to go back into some form of education. So I went, started teaching soon after that. I've mm. been there, this is my 31st, 32nd year of teaching. So you know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I decided that with this profession, and when you really get good at it, you're you're too old and tired to actually do it any longer. But <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations! Though that's an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> um, and oh, how has COVID affected your job? It's been interesting, um, as I'm sure I, I've decided that we need to start a new drinking game called, you know, every time someone says, you know, in the year of COVID or, you know, in this in this unusual times, I mean, we would spend all day, every day drunk, um, but anyway, um, we're not doing live performances this year. We're doing our perform performances are all going to be filmed and streamed or Zoom performances. So that automatically changes my job because normally with stage costuming, um, the students have a lab um, component they take with the class and they have to run wardrobe. Well, we don't have that for them to do this year. So I'm having to find other ways to make it happen for them. So they still get the same kind of learning that they've had in the past. So that's been a challenge. And how do I do teach sewing remotely where the fact that people cannot be right up close to see what I'm doing. So having a camera and filming it. And that's one of the things I think I may keep. That's been kind of like cool walking through the costume shop and watching people with the um, computer up and watching my demonstration <laughs> online. I'm like, that's kind of cool. I think I may keep that because people can see easier what, what, I'm, what I'm doing than they could when they were in the room with me. Um, but like I said, we're not doing live theater. So um, we're still doing shows. We're still doing costumes. Are they as detailed in the, as they would have been in the past? Maybe not. Fittings are interesting because we have to have gloves on. We have to have some kind of like a um, smock or something on to cover our clothes. And that has to be washed immediately afterwards. After we do, you know, you hand the costume to, the, to them and tell them to put it on and you touch them as little as possible. When they finish, you have them hang it up and you don't touch it again for 72 hours. And then whoever's working on it has to hang it up. You know, like one person can't work on it for an hour and then someone else come in and work on the same costume. It's like, that has to wait for 72 hours in between people touching that costume. And so the costume, once it's completed and, and altered by the person has to hang for 72 more hours before the actor can have it again. So we have to be much more ahead of the game yeah. So it's yeah, it's been it's been an interesting challenge to put it my own way. Wow. And um what would be your message to any theater teacher from pre-K through college level struggling with dealing with all the challenges of this time? We're all learning. We're all gonna make mistakes. We're all human, and that is so okay. And all you have to do is just be honest with your students up, just be upfront and say, you know what, I'm learning this as I go along too. And we can learn this together. And I'll forgive you more if you forgive me more. And just be as flexible as possible and just be as patient as possible and be patient with yourself. Forgive yourself. We're gonna make mistakes and it's okay. And none of us are perfect. All of us are human and we're gonna get through this. And you know, it will all come back eventually. We just have to get through this time and hang tough for right now. Yeah, and on that note, um, just cause I've heard a lot of like scary things, especially like what would your message be to younger people looking into a career in the arts in general that are nervous right now about that? The arts will always come back. When you study, cause I teach um, period styles, fashion history, things like that. And if you look at that, the arts always come back. Even in periods where in, there may be a back off, but somebody, people have to be creative. People need outlets. And look what everyone's turning to right now to get through this. They're turning to music. They're turning to uh, movies. They're turning to TV. They're turning to all those things. It will come back. Just be patient. It's going to be okay. 
we will survive this. We will come out stronger on the other end and people are missing us. So we will get through this. We'll get through this together. And yeah, this is a sucky year. There's no other better way to put it, but we will get through this. Thank you so much. I feel like I need to record your voice saying that and just play it for myself <laughs> when I'm feeling anxious. <laughs> no, no, we, in, in all seriousness, one of my students today posted something on Facebook and the fact that she was feeling overwhelmed and feel, feeling constantly busy and like there's no time for herself and no time to breathe. And I said, take time for yourself. Give yourself permission to say, I'm unplugging right now. We are so constantly connected by everything. Even in this time, like I was off work um, all through the summer. Normally I'm doing summer theater. We went online mid-March. And I, so I was home from mid-March until mid-August when we came back and mm -hmm. like everybody else. But it was nonstop with training, with, with meetings and, and everything else that we were doing. I didn't really have a day where I could just say, oh, I can just, you know, do what I want. And it's like, I had to tell myself, no, I can say no. I can un turn things off. I can unplug for a while and it's okay. And we will get through this and it's okay to say no sometimes. That's very important. It's okay to say, you know what? I'm not answering emails between six o'clock at night till six o'clock the next morning. I'm not looking at them. I'm not answering them. You know, I'm not dealing with that. That's, this is my time. I will, I will deal with you during regular work hours because we have to do that. We have to give ourselves permission to say it's okay and the world is not going to fall apart if I don't answer that email at 10 o'clock at night. Nobody's going to die. <laughs> World's not going to come to an end and it's going to be okay. And as much as I like to think the world revolves around me, I like to say I stand still to change a light bulb, let the world revolve around me. It doesn't. And things will, things will be okay. We'll get <laughs> I like what you said about how like none of us know like I don't know like especially like from the college level it's like there's a point where like even like PhDs aren't figuring out how to teach online like none of us it's like new territory for everybody. <laughs> yeah I've gotten really good at doing zoom and doing pow showing powerpoints and zoom and I do I'm doing powerpoints for every class and every lecture and so the students have it and I've gotten really good at that. So <laughs> My and new it's, talent. <laughs> it's a little sad though, because like I think like theater teachers pride themselves on like being like not the lecture course. Like I know, like, but like it's like, you know what? We need to survive. <laughs> we need to survive. I'm I'm currently making a PowerPoint and writing a lecture on how to run wardrobe. Normally that was just something that they did. Mm -hmm. And then, so they learned by doing well, they can't this semester. So I'm having to write a lecture and, and showing them videos and telling them what was expected so that they understand and they learn. It's different and it's gonna have to be different this year. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> you are wonderful. Thanks again, Cheryl, for those words of comfort and wisdom that I keep repeating back to myself since our interview. Um, next time I will be interviewing more theater teachers. My next videos on deck for this series are from a bunch of my grad school friends who are telling me what it's like to be a teacher in New York City during the pandemic. So please stick around for those. Feel free to subscribe and like if you want to see more of these types of videos and have a fantastic day. Bye. Thank you so much for watching.